About two years ago, Maria Kendall was perusing homes for sale on the website Zillow. She wanted a new home for her boyfriend Larry Colton and the kids they foster in the place she called home, Marshalltown. As Maria swiped through real estate, she was surprised to see a familiar house. It was her mom's house. So I contact my sister, who is uh, my mother's living with, and I ask her when my mother's house went in for sale. She said, my mom's house is not for sale. What are you talking about? So Maria's mother, Natalia Esteban, had bought the house in 2001. She moved away temporarily in 2018, but returned to Iowa every summer. The home was filled with memories and knickknacks from her life in Mexico. Maria says all of that was thrown out when Natalia's ownership of the house was switched over to someone else, someone they didn't even know, through what's called a quiet title petition. It was very frustrating, like Larry said, scary, thinking that she was going to lose the only thing that she's, she has left. A quiet title petition is a relatively common way to switch over a house's title. It's mostly used in boundary disputes or when a homeowner dies. For the title to switch over, the person filing the petition must prove they have an interest in the property. The problem is, the law doesn't define exactly what that interest has to look like. And it just seems like there is something nefarious going on. That's Natalie Linner. She's a law professor at Drake University. Quiet title requires a petitioner to notify the most recent owner of the house. If the owner can't be found, the petitioner has to publish a public notice, like in a newspaper. Someone named Catherine Gooding petitioned for Natalia's house, claiming the house was abandoned and that Gooding had been paying taxes on it. She published her notice in the Marshalltown Times Republican. Since Natalia wasn't in Iowa at the time, nor does she speak English, she missed the court hearing, which meant Gooding won the case by default. Here's law professor Natalie Lenner again. And that is the way that I think the law could be enhanced here, to require a more robust evidentiary showing, to require the return of mail or, you know, I, I, I'm not sure off the top, top of my head what that would look like, but we wouldn't um, just allow quiet title actions to be decided on default without a more robust showing. A Midwest newsroom investigation found that Catherine Gooding has acquired more than 40 properties in Marshalltown, about a third of them through quiet title petitions. Gooding and her attorney declined to comment. Some city officials, like Marshalltown Housing Director Michelle Sponheimer, say they worry the recent natural hazards, like the 2018 tornadoes and the derecho, put diverse populations in Marshalltown at risk of potentially predatory practices. Residents have a wide range of language skills, and not all of them read an English-language newspaper, much less the public notice section. You know, you've got a lot of population that has that potential to, to be in a position where, you know, they just don't have what they need as resources um, behind them to know, like, oh, this is something that I can fight. Sponheimer says at least three other families have reached out to the city with claims similar to the Estebans. Nobody's living in here. Yeah, this is a house right here. It was very clean and mold. Back at the Esteban house, Maria and Larry point out how it has changed since Maria's mother first lost her title. The two went to court for Natalia and proved the house wasn't abandoned, and Natalia won the title back. I think sentimental stuff is worth more than, than money. So for her, it was like she was going more through like, what about the picture for this, this and that? I was like, well, there's nothing you can do, Mom. Be grateful that you got your house back. Natalia did eventually decide to sell her Marshalltown house on her own terms. She's decided to live with family in California. For the Midwest Newsroom, I'm Cassidy Arena.